Stone Diablo 2, there's some quest rewards that are absolutely amazing. You want to do every single one of them. And then there's quests that you can just go ahead and skip and not even worry about. I'm going to let you know what those are right now. All right, we're obviously going from the beginning to the end. So we're starting off at Quest 1, Act 1, and this is the Den of Evil quest. I would recommend in normal, absolutely go and do the Den of Evil right off the bat, especially if you're playing online with a full party. Even if you're not, it's a good place to get your first level or two. And also you can get one skill point from a car after completing the quest and you also get one free respec. A lot of builds will start off with one type of character, maybe where you're going into fire early on and then you want to switch to cold for a sorceress perhaps. And you need at least one respec on your playthrough. So it's always good in normal just to go ahead and do the Den of Evil quest if you want to do ones later. I would say just skip them on your normal playthrough for no Nightmare and for Hell. And then come back later and do the quest to get that one skill point because you definitely don't want to miss any skill points. Now the second one here, we got the Sisters Burial Ground. This is where you go kill Blood Raven. Uh, the reward for this is just a free mercenary and then you can hire the Act 1 mercenary. So you really only want to do this if you actually want to get the Act 1 mercenary. I never do, maybe in the new patch 2.4 here. People are going to want to go ahead and do that insight bow for the Act 1 mercenary just to try it out so you can do this. But I would recommend just skipping the second quest here in Act 1. Now the search for Kane. This is one that actually in normal and nightmare, you can just go ahead and skip and not do if you don't really want to. Now a lot of times, maybe in act one, you go do some Trist runs to get some levels or something. So you're gonna end up doing it anyways. But if you're not gonna go that route in nightmare, normally you can just skip it in hell. At some point, eventually you're gonna come back and do it. But you do not have to do it on your normal playthrough. You can just skip it originally, come back and do it at some point. Because that way you get Kane to identify stuff for you for free instead of paying him $100 per item. Now we're looking at the Forgotten Tower. And this is one that you kind of just end up doing usually uh, on your own. In Nightmare, it almost always gets skipped because there's really no purpose to do it. Maybe in Normal, you want to get yourself a stealth so you're going to run the Countess a few different times. But the Countess is one that you can absolutely skip if you don't want to get any of the stuff from there. It is a very skippable quest. But in Hell, you can get runes up to Is from her uh, regular drop table. You get keys. So it is one that's good to do later. And in Normal also to get the runes to make those low rune words that make your character better. But if you're playing through a character later, maybe it's your second or third character, you absolutely can skip the Forgotten Tower and taking out the Countess. Now tools for the trade here. We've got Charcy imbues an item for you. You can absolutely skip this one if you want to. It's one that if you accidentally go the wrong way when you're looking to go down into the jail i believe it is you will find the herodic malice you'll so if you get that and you get this quest you could go ahead and imbue something early on people will like to imbue uh, boots hopefully to get some rare boots that have some faster walk run on it because walk run early on is absolutely sick to have but it's definitely one that you can go ahead and just skip i literally never ever use that particular one and obviously the last quest you kill and dart will get to act two you gotta do that one now as for the first quest in act two this is radiment's layer obviously go take out radiment and if you look at the reward this is one you absolutely want to do for every difficulty normal nightmare and hell but this is one i almost always always skip when I'm doing my normal playthrough. Now, obviously getting a skill point, any skill point type of quest you're gonna wanna get, but a lot of times it's just not worth the time it takes to get all the way down to Radiment and take them out on a normal playthrough. And it's a very, very, very good one to just go ahead and come back and do. Now, there's gonna be some here that are all gonna be required for playing through the game. So I guess it's kind of self-explanatory here. You gotta get the Saf, you know, the Herodric Staff, you gotta get it. The uh, Tainted Sun, getting the amulet for the staff, you gotta do it. Going through the Arcane Sanctuary, you gotta do it in order to get, uh, you know, past the Summoner. You don't actually have to kill the Summoner, by the way. You can just click that book, pop open the portal, dip through, and then you get to the Canyon of Magi's and move on. And then the last quest here, uh, you know, allow to advance to Act 3 to, with uh, Mashif. You have to take out Duriel, then you have to go talk to a couple different people, go over to Mashif sail over to act three so really the only one here that is optional is the very first one here and usually like i said you skip it and then come back and do all of these for every difficulty now the first quest in act three the golden bird this is one that you either do on complete accident honestly that's usually how it happens or 
you come back and you try to find this item. Now, when you're just out randomly killing monsters, the monsters will drop a particular item. I think Editor Phil will slide it in because I can't remember exactly what it is. But you bring that back to town and then you have to go talk to Mashif and Mashif's wife. And then they'll give you the golden bird. You talk to Kane, you go over to Alakar, and then he will give you a potion that will give you 22 life permanently. So it's absolutely one you want to do in every single normal nightmare in hell. But it is one that every single time pretty much I skip it unless I accidentally find it and then come back and get it later. So we'll move on to the Blade of the Old Religion. You get a rare ring from Ormus. Now this is one that I almost always skip as well. And then I, I don't ever come back and do it either because the, the reward for this quest is not really worth the time to come back and do. Now this one you have to go get uh, the Gibbon from just before you go to the Flare Dungeon. You can do it then if you want to, but a lot of times I end up just going ahead and skipping that in every difficulty. Just don't necessarily worry about that quest. The second quest in Act 2. Now, Kaleem's Will here. Um, this one is, you have to do it. So, what you're going to do, huh? This is going and getting the three different parts. The eye, the brain, and the horn. Putting them together, but with the flail that you get from one of the council members to break the completing orb. So, uh, this is mandatory. You have to do it. Not a much needs to be said about that. L uh, lame Asan's Tomb. Uh, I believe that's how it's pronounced, but this is one that you're going to want to come back and do with every single character because you get five free stat points. You see it right there, five free stat points. So usually that's going to get dumped into vitality. I will always, always, always skip this on the playthrough and then come back and do this one. Now, I always tend to forget which one it is, but I believe it is the ruined temple you have to go in. I look it up literally every time. Editor Phil will slide it in if it's not the ruined temple. Okay, there it was, but uh, I always forget if it's a ruined, forgotten, blah, 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 but I believe it's ruined temple. And you go down there, there's a really fast uh, archers or whatever, the, the, the ladies with the hexes, I guess they are. You take them out and you just grab the book. You can just grab the book if you want to, and then follow through the steps of that quest to get the five extra stat points. Now, the Black Temple, no reward other than being able to enter the Durance of Hate. So, um, that's another one there that's uh, a required one to do. So, that's not nothing to talk about there to do. And the Guardian. So, uh, this is the very, very final one there. That's just how you get to the next act. Obviously required as well. So, that one's not optional. Alright, now we moved on to the half-completed former final act of Diablo 2, Act 4. So, the very first one, the fallen angel quest this is one you absolutely must do on every character but it is one that i almost always skip where you go out and take out Izul, and then you talk to Teriel and you get two skill points two skill points is incredible and this is the first quest in act four so just skip it on your playthrough and make sure you come back in every player's difficulty and complete that one now similarly to that the hellforge you take the mephisto soul stone you get the hammer from uh, whatever that guy's name is that's right by the Hellforge. You take it, you get bashed to Soulstone, and you could get, in Hell difficulty anyways, you can get some uh, good runes up to Gull and some gems and stuff like that. So this is um, one, once again, that I will always, always, always skip on the playthrough. Essentially always. And then later I will come back and do it at least in Hell 100% for sure. Do not skip the Hell one. Normal and Nightmare. It's one of the ones if you come across it on a playthrough, you could go ahead and do it. It's not necessary necessary to come back and do them. You don't really get that high of a reward. But usually I will also come back and do those just to get the little rune rewards and the gems that you get from that. Now the final one in Act 4. As with every quest, the final one, it's mandatory. You kill Diablo. You don't really get a reward except for nowadays you go on to Act 5. And that would be the old expansion. But now it's just generally a static part of the game. Alrighty, now we're moving on to Act 5, and the very first quest in this act is the Siege on Aragath. Now, you're going to probably end up doing this quest on complete accident, I'm going to be honest. All you have to do, this is where you go out and take out Shank, and then that quote-unquote ends the siege on the city, and you get your Larzic Socket quest. Now, this is 
if you do end up skipping it, you're going to want to go back and complete all of these. But usually on a playthrough, you're going to end up doing it anyways, because he's right there, kind of in your way, essentially. So that Lars Exaki quest is so incredibly useful. And it's, it's not, I mean, valuable. It is super valuable because you want to put sockets in. Every, you find a Shaco, put a Topaz in it, and a lot of other things like that. Lars Exaki quest, the Siege on Haragoth, you definitely want to do that at some point. Now the rescue on Mount Area. This is one that, it's another one that maybe you'll do on accident on the way through. They're right there, you go ahead and hit them. But you can absolutely skip this if you want. A lot of times in normal, you're gonna wanna do this because a Tal, a Ral, and an Ort are very, very important early on. That right there, just those three runes, you get a three socket of shield, you make Ancient's Pledge. That is a shield that a lot of people will go to, especially super early on. Or those runes also have a lot of other uses, whether you're crafting with the rail to get your first uh, caster amulet to get some FCR, using the tall rune to make your spirit or something like that. So it's a quest that maybe in normal you want to do. And in the other difficulties, I usually end up doing it later on. I go back and do it, but I would not be uh, disappointed or, you know, think you're doing anything wrong if you just go ahead and skip that quest later because the, the reward isn't really anything much, to be perfectly honest. Now, Prison of Ice. This is going and rescuing Anya. This is one that, once again, I will almost always skip on my initial playthrough. But 100% of the time, do not skip this uh, for eternity. Make sure you come back and do each one of these in every difficulty. 10 to all resistance is absolutely amazing. Like, So that's 30 all res you get from just completing this quest permanently forever you go save anya you take her the potion come back and talk to uh akara mala it's actually mala but talk to mala and you get that scroll and you get that 10 to all res must 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 cannot stress this enough must 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 every difficulty do that quest now the uh betrayal on Har haragoth now this is uh where your knight your name and item from anya so this one you can absolutely skip um, unless you're going to be farming keys at Neolithic. You don't need to worry about this literally at all. It just personalizes an item for you. It really does not matter. So that's only one if you want to be cool and have your name on your item that you like or whatever. But if you're a key farmer, you're going to end up doing it anyways on accident. And that's, that goes for every difficulty. You can just kind of skip it and not worry about it. Now the Rite of Passage, this is one that's mandatory. You will uh, get a bunch of bonus experience to where you'll you'll gain level. So that's one that's mandatory. You can't skip it, you have to do it to move on. And the Eve of Destruction, once again, that is taking out Bale, the final boss in the game. You can't skip it, so you're definitely, definitely going to want to do that one on every difficulty.